The main motivation and the thing that tells me I'm doing the thing that's right for me is the fact that you can wake up in the morning and even though it's cold and dark and windy and rainy outside, you absolutely want to go to work and you feel like you can, you know, every day is an opportunity to make a difference. The one piece of advice I'd give myself if I look back at my formative years as a teacher would be to not worry so much. Children are fairly robust and children can kind of get over the fact that you didn't quite cover chapter one within within a lesson. And I think that worrying is not something that teachers are good at not doing, but I think if I could possibly remove that from my, still from my armory now, then, then I would. Supply teachers are key because they, they plug gaps and it's absolutely key that, that there are good people available to come into schools and to, to make sure that those gaps are plugged. I think what benefits supply teachers and what helps supply teachers is that they get the benefit of experience from a number of schools and they see some really, really excellent practice that they can bring to their own personal, uh, personal experience of, of, uh, of teaching. Tips that I would give to NQTs would be to absolutely stick with it. Your NQT year is likely to be a roller coaster. It's likely to be up and down. It's likely to have peaks and troughs and bits where you're kind of really up against it and worrying about things and kind of adapting yourself to a full-time teaching job. But there will be absolute moments of joy and, and the moments that you can't get in any other profession, arguably. It's a joy to do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's something that people should really stick at and give it a go. I think with more challenging students, there's always a reason why they are more challenging. It's easy to become disillusioned and to become upset with, with students who don't do what you say first time. And there's a story to everything that happens. Behaviours don't go on for no reason whatsoever. And I think it's important to remember that these are human beings that we're dealing with and there are reasons and whys and wherefores of why people act in the way that they do. There's no quick fix and there's no one behavioural technique that can sort everything out like that. My top tip would be to look at those relationships and to build relationships and to make sure to use emotional intelligence to speak to people in a way that they, they want to be spoken to and how you'd want to be spoken to. Students are treated with the respect that they deserve and, and vice versa and I think that comes back um, in, in spades really. I think if I'm having a bad day, um, the first thing, I, my first part of call really is to consider how actually how lucky I am. It's an absolute pleasure and a privilege to be in a position where you can educate young minds and you can make a difference in your day-to-day -day job. And I think teachers have bad days, but teachers are professionals. And I think it's our role to make sure that we understand quite how lucky we are to be in the profession, but also, you know, ride it out and tomorrow's always gonna be a better day.